there is a woman in a realm of diamond makeovers. Her name is Alona, and her mission is a garbage picking. Excuse me? Oops, sorry. It's called treasure hunting. With her keen eye and unwavering determination, Alona transforms discarded and sad pieces into dazzling finds. Um, at least she tries. Hey, enough! Cruising through the city, our gal spots an old wreck about to bite the dust. Could there be some hidden loot in there? With a hold-up shout, she slams the brakes on the wrecking crew. Ain't no way she's letting them bulldoze potential treasure. She ventures in, and bingo. There it is. A dusty old dresser tucked away in a corner. Jackpot. With a grin, she struts out, hauling that dresser like she just won the lottery. She knew a little curiosity and craziness could pay off big time. And here it is, a hidden gem. Hi everybody, welcome to another makeover. Okay, it was a little bit exaggerated, but it's based on a real story. I picked this dresser at the garage sale before the house was demolished, but it wasn't actually part of garage sale. It was hidden in the house, and if I didn't find it, it would go to the dump. The top of the dresser was absolutely disaster. There was obviously some water damage, lots of scratches, all that type of goodies. One of those beautiful handles was missing and that was the scariest part because I didn't have enough skills and equipment to rebuild this. First I needed to give this dresser a good clean because it was a little bit dirty, especially the top. And I think someone attempted to refinish this dresser a while ago because once I cleaned the top I found that there were a couple of spots where the veneer was kind of transparent so they almost sent it through the veneer and they didn't really put any top coat on this dresser except for some oil i think it was a thick oil but again it was probably a long time ago because that oil dried out and nobody ever reapplied the oil because oh my gosh that veneer was so dry despite of having those spots with really thin veneer and risking to sand through it I started with 120 grit sandpaper because the top was in pretty rough shape and 180 wouldn't do a job here. And if you noticed and wondered why my dresser isn't hooked up to my dust collection system, I did it on purpose because I needed some sanding dust. Yes, I'm gonna be making my own wood filler. I don't know why, but I was so worried that I wouldn't have enough dust after sanding, but look at this baby. After sanding, I put some mineral spirit on the top because I wanted to see what I was dealing with. It's beautiful, but as you can see, we have some discoloration here. The color is uneven because of the oil in some areas and because of the water damage in the other areas. Of course, some deep scratches are still there and I'm going to deal with them first. As usual, I spray some water over each and every scratch and I let it sit for about a minute or so. And usually I use a damp cloth, but this time I sprayed a lot of water, so I just put a dry one over it. And then I iron it with hot iron. If you are new to this whole refinishing process, this is me steaming out the scratches, at least trying. The water I sprayed, it raises the wood grain a little bit, and once I put the hot iron, it raises the wood grain a little bit more. And hopefully it will raise the scratch so I can get rid of it with next round of sanding. Oh, and this one is the deepest one, and I was like 90% sure that this scratch is gonna stay here forever. Or at least the uh, scratch mark. But the iron did a really good job, and I was able to rate the wood grain and transform the scratch from deep to the surface scratch. I had one area on the top where the veneer was still there, but it was chipping out, if that makes sense. Before setting my top one more time, I decided to fill that area up with my custom-made epoxy wood filler. So here is my high-end thick wood dust and here is the high-end epoxy from Dollar Store. I mix the glue, I add some wood dust and then I apply that wood filler to the areas on the top. I used this for this chip veneer area and there was also a big dance I couldn't get rid of so I applied this wood filler to that dance too. And sorry guys for my voice not being cheering, I just got a cold or the flu or something so I can't control it. Once the boxy hardened, I sanded it with 120 grit sandpaper and as you can see it blended in perfectly. The top was ready to be sanded with 180, but I needed to deal with the sides as well. And it would be nice to sand the drawers too. And as you can see, there is something going on in the left corner. I forgot to film it, but I decided to build it up with the same epoxy I used on the top. 
I sanded these sides with 120 and then I sanded the whole body with 180 grit sandpaper and I did it by hand. I've been recently doing more hand sanding with 180 grit sandpaper because I started noticing lots of swivel marks. I mean, they are not those obvious swivel marks that are hard to miss, but sometimes even if my sanding job looks awesome, at this certain angle I can still see those nasty pigtails. I mean, they're hardly noticeable and probably nobody would ever notice them, but I just know that they are there and I choose to do a hand sanding. I'm not gonna lie, I don't sand the back panels of the dressers all the time, because in most cases they're in pretty good shape and I just clean them. But this one obviously needed to be sanded. The next step was supposed to be to sand the drawers, but I decided to do the legs for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's because I am a chaotic person or I just needed a break from sanding. For the record, I like sanding, but sometimes it's just too much. I didn't invent these legs, I found the template on YouTube, uh, the channel named Sarah Bookshop Diary, I link her in the description box. I modified the template a little bit for my purpose and then I transferred it onto the piece of wood. And as a piece of wood, I'm using this chair seat I salvaged from our local thrift store over a year ago. It's been waiting for its big moment and finally that time has come. But we had a teeny bitty problem there. The surface of the chair seat usually uh, isn't flat. But it's not a problem if you have a hand planer. I don't use this tool very often and I'm still kind of clumsy, but oh well, we learn as we go. After about half an hour, the surface wasn't perfectly flat. I mean, it wasn't perfect at all, but it was good enough to make the legs. I transferred the template on the seat and all I needed just to make a couple of cuts. I can never make a perfect straight cut with my jigsaw, that's why the sides of the legs I needed to be perfectly flat and straight, I didn't cut with my jigsaw, I cut above the line and then I made a perfect cut on my miter saw. Once the legs were done, I rounded the edges with my router. I don't have a lot of experience working with the router, but every time I use it, I'm getting better and better. So my message here, if you're new to something, and I'm not talking just about the power tools, anything, you're not gonna get better until you try it. And then repeat it again and again. A theory is very important, I learned a lot on internet before I started working with the router, but without practice, theory means nothing. So go ahead and try it, and if in your case it's about power tool, don't forget about safety. Sorry you guys, I deleted some footages by accident, but I'm gonna walk you through. Instead of edge bending, this dresser had like a frame made out of solid teak. This top plank was coming off, so I had to put it back together. I used just a regular wood glue and as you can see lots of tape. Same about this trim, I didn't put them back all together at the same time because I couldn't level them. So I glued this top one, I left it dry over the night and then I glued this little trim and they perfectly fit. And here is me mixing epoxy again because sometimes I just don't know where to stop. First I thought that I would only fill up the dents on one of the drawers fronts with the leftovers of epoxy, but then there was a little gap between top of the dresser and this top trim. And knowing that the veneer is usually way thinner on the edges, I decided to put some epoxy glue there anyway. For these repairs, I partially used the leftovers of epoxy and partially the epoxy from the tube I bought from different place. I was in our closest big city and I was near Dollarama and I also was out of epoxy glue. So it's a big city Dollarama epoxy glue. I added my teak sawdust, mixed it all together and then applied it to the area I wanted to. And because, like I said, I don't know where to stop, I applied it to some areas. I thought the veneer was really thin, so I needed to apply the epoxy. I know it probably doesn't make any sense, but I did it. While the epoxy was hardening, I finally started sanding the drawers. The handles were sitting pretty tight in their places, so I decided to sand the drawers just like this. I started with 120 grit sandpaper because of all those scratches I had on the surface. It's hard to catch them on camera, but they were there. And here's the patch I made and you'll see it in a second how great it turned out. What I love about this epoxy filler is I can sand it smooth and then I can stain it. It's pretty hard, it doesn't shrink and I can easily blend it in. Once I was done with 120, I did some small repairs here and there. 
like the areas with the really thin veneer. It wasn't even thin, I don't know how to explain it, it wasn't a cheap veneer, but in some areas where the wood grain was really deep, the veneer started crumbling, if that makes sense. I filled in this area with some wood filler, thick wood filler I had on hand. I didn't use epoxy here because I'll show you here in a sec what happened to my epoxy. Almost all of the scratches disappeared with sanding with 120 grit, but there was one left really deep. I tried to stem it out and it helped, but just a little because the scratch was too deep. It went through the veneer and I thought there was nothing I can do about it. But I was wrong. I had on hand those wax sticks, I inherited probably from my mother-in-law. And I know they are meant to repair some scratches on the surface, but I thought they were like uh, if you have a piece of furniture and you scratch the finish, you use the wax stick to camouflage that scratch to match the color of the finish. I also mailed this wax to do some repairs with dents, but I would have never thought that they would help with scratches like this. Anyways, I decided to give it a try. I just rubbed this wax stick, I didn't mail it into the scratch because it didn't even make sense. I just rubbed it over the scratch and it helped. And sorry again, the footage of doing me that is missing. Like visually, right after waxing, I didn't see any difference, but I will show you later the difference when I apply the top coat to the drawers. Oh, and before I did whatever I just told you about, I hand sanded this drawer and all other drawers with 180 grit sandpaper. Next, I sanded the legs. I started with 100 grit sandpaper because the surface was pretty rough and then I moved to 120 and finished with 180. By that time, the glue dried, the epoxy hardened and I was ready to sand the body of the dresser. And here you can see where I applied the epoxy, not just around the trim but in the middle of the top as well. And what you probably can't see, because I can't in the video, that the epoxy turned out yellow-ish. I mean, it has a color of the teak sawdust, of course, but the epoxy itself is supposed to be clear. And I was like, okay, it doesn't really matter once it's sanded and stained. And then I started sanding and I realized that this epoxy doesn't give me the same effect that usually my epoxy does. It's really hard to explain because it was just the feeling while I was sanding, it was just different. And after sanding, I could still see that yellow undertone. And it was the big mistake in the first place to apply this epoxy to those spots. Because while I was sanding the epoxy, no matter how carefully I tried to do that, I sanded through the veneer in the areas around. I mean, I didn't sand it through the veneer the whole way through, but I created more spots like those that I was trying to fix. The edges I was able to sand pretty much without accidents, except for the couple of spots. Using the epoxy in this situation wasn't the worst idea, but I think using just the wood filler would be better because I wouldn't have to sand that much. The trims I sanded as well with 120 grit. And a little bit more hand sanding here. This is the finishing sanding with 180 grit sandpaper. Missing footage alert. Before doing what I'm doing in the video, I applied some mineral spirit to the top and I made sure that the discoloration didn't go anywhere. I didn't apply the oxalic acid because I had a funny feeling that it was not gonna work in this case. And after applying the oxalic acid, I would have to sand the whole top again, which wasn't a really good idea for this veneer. I decided to stain the top in a darker color to match those beautiful handles, to make like a two-tone dresser. And once I reached the spot with my Big City Dollarama epoxy glue repairs, I realized that that epoxy doesn't take stain as good as my regular epoxy. These two spots and this area around the trim, it's the latest applied epoxy. And here is somewhere the patch that was made out of my regular epoxy. And this is again the first mix of epoxy. Because of the bright straight sunlight, you can still see that spot, but trust me, with my eyes, I could barely see it, it was almost invisible. The top doesn't look too bad, but still I can see some discoloration here and there, so I needed to apply a second coat. I applied the same stain, but this time I didn't wipe it off. I just applied with a foam brush and I let it dry. Here is the top looked like once the stain had dried. I looked at it and honestly I hated it so much. I thought it was too dark, but it was too late, I couldn't undo it. Because I didn't wipe off the stain, the epoxy absorbed it different way and you can see those glossy spots. I decided to apply the top coat and just go from there. Ah. 
I left Polly to dry and then once I got back to the top, I fell in love. I knew that the stain I used, it makes everything look a little bit dull, but I didn't expect this huge difference. I lightly sanded the body of the dresser with 400 grit sandpaper and I was almost ready to apply the second coat. And those glossy epoxy spots, they blended in perfectly with the top coat. Except those two trouble spots, they turned out a little bit lighter. To fix it, I applied the same stain with a brush and I let it dry again. If you remember, I had one handle missing and there was no way I would have recreated the same handle. I tried, but let's face it, I don't have enough skills and I don't have enough tools. I found local woodworking shop and the guy made almost the same handle for me for $75. Pretty expensive, but I thought it was worth it. Original handles were made out of teak and this one was made out of walnut. The difference is pretty obvious, so I had to stain this new handle and I tried to do my best to match the color. The body of the dresser was made out of chipboard. Even though it was really good quality of a chipboard, still it's a chipboard and I couldn't attach the legs to it. Instead of building the whole new base and using lots of wood, I decided to cut two boards, one for each side, and attach two legs to each board. I measured and cut those boards and set them off camera. In my imagination, those boards would be visible only if you sit on the floor. And spoiler alert, I was drawn again. I did lots of measurements and drawings and finally I decided where I want to attach the legs. And by the way, for the first time in my life, I have troubles to identify the wood I built the legs from. I used to work for a huge woodworking company. I worked there for 10 years. I worked as a sales manager and I learned a lot. And now I know how the most of wood species look like. I know the wood grain, I know the patterns and colors. They were mostly European wood species, but since I moved to Canada and started doing my furniture flipping, I learned about North American wood species because in the same, let's call it wood family, the patterns are pretty similar. So it wasn't hard for me to learn. But I think this chair was made in Asia and this is Asian wood species. It's a hardwood and it has pretty intense wood grain. If you have any idea what kind of wood it is, please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful. Because ever since it bothers me, I can't sleep. To prevent any moving while I was attaching the legs, I pre-glued them to the boards using the CA glue. Then I started drilling the holes and I realized how hard the wood was because the drill bit didn't go as smooth as I expected and the CA glue couldn't keep the legs in place. I think it would have made a better sense if I would pre-drill the holes in the legs first, then attach them to the boards using the CA glue, put the screws in the holes and mark the spots where I have to pre-drill the holes in the boards, take the legs off, pre-drill the holes in the boards, and then attach the legs with the screws. That's the order I would do it next time. Anyways, the legs are attached from this side, now I needed to put some holes and add some screws from the other side. Before attaching the legs to the dresser, I stained them with the same cement water-based stain in the color Amaretta and then applied two coats of poly. This is the drawer where the scratch was and I thought I had better footage of it, but no. The scratch is somewhere in this area and at this angle you can't even see it. I still could notice it with my eyes, but mostly because I knew it was there. After I applied the top coat, it blended in even better. Once we get to the final result, I'll show you that drawer. To the drawers, I applied two coats of poly as well, with lightly sanding in between coats. For better stability, I decided not just to screw the boards with the legs to the bottom of the dresser, but to apply some wood glue first. I also added some sand glue here and there, because it bonds right away, and it would keep the board in place while I'm screwing it to the bottom. I flipped the dresser on the legs and applied the final top coat. And guess what? Once I flipped the dresser, of course those boards, they were visible. And sorry again for the missing footage here. I was trying to make a room on my SD card when my camera is pretty old and it decided to pick some random footages and just deleted them. And I couldn't undo or restore the data I just deleted because it happened on the camera, not on the computer. So what I did, I added an additional board between those two boards and of course it was a recycled board from one of my other projects. So I attached that board and I stained the edges the same color as the body of the dresser, darker color. 
This way the board, the base, was still visible, but it didn't catch your eye right away because it was staying in the same color and it blended in perfectly. There were some evidence of water damage on the back panel, so I decided to take it off, sand it and stain it. I mixed the epoxy for the last time for this project to attach the handles. And we are done here. Let me remind you how this dresser looked before. And here is how it looks now. And I promised you to show the scratch, so one of the middle drawers has it. Can you see it from this angle? <laughs> I can't. Here it is, it's a bottom drawer. And if you still can't see it, so here it is. Old and probably expired wax sticks from Walmart. Perfect solution. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Easter and see you in my next video.